Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the best types of developers. Let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, oh, I've heard you talk about code monkeys and that they are not necessarily bad for your company, but what would you say are the best types of developers to have in your company? Well, I would say that the, the answer to that question is you need a healthy balance of personality. I would say that we, what we want here is to, to address this from two different perspectives. So you have the professional perspective, like basically what I mean there is what type of developer are you? What are your, uh, what's your core, uh, as I like to call it, your uh, your corporate identity, your technical identity, professional identity. That's a good one. Your professional identity. That's the one perspective. And then you have the other perspective, which is the social aspect, like the soft skills, etc., etc. Right. So, if we start by saying that, uh, at least from my experience, the most important thing, if you want to have an effective software company, where you actually produce well working uh, well it's not just about producing good results it's about producing both results but also that you have a what i call a compounding effect on the results that you produce well in order for that to happen you need to have number one above all else you need to have developers who fit together socially the social aspect is the key player here now I'm not saying that you shouldn't, because I don't want you to think that I'm saying that technical skills aren't important. They're very important to get to those like right, really, really high results. But if if you have the choice, and this is like the biggest, most common mistake that managers make, where they hire people without knowing the team, and that is very dangerous. Because if you don't create people, or you put up together a team that has personal chemistry, it becomes very hard for you. One part is, of course, conflict and tension, but it also becomes hard for you to create a compounding effect. And a compounding effect is when two developers click, or more developers, like two, two or more, but they click. They they see the value in each other. They actually enjoy having each other around. They, I'm not saying necessarily become friends, but that is, of course, an ideal situation. That chemistry that's built up creates a very good, eco, like it's a very good um, situation to have. Not only because due to like for the work that is being done here and now, but also for getting in new people and so forth. You're creating this little family or this little team, this little sport team, whatever call it, whatever you want. And for you to be able to decide uh, what type of person it fits into that mix, it's really hard because that's social, like that's social dynamics, and that's like an entire series of videos and books and so forth. But I can give you what I've found at the very least. It's very good to try to balance the team with personalities. You want some people who have a lot of thoughts and ideas and a lot of energy. Ideally, you want them to be uh, in the same uh, same team as people who are like-minded, of course, but you should also include people who are maybe a little bit on the shyer side, a little bit more introverted, a little bit more calm, in more attention to detail, etc., etc., and try to find people who have enough social overlap so that they're different people but they can still communicate effectively and the reason why I say that is because it, what you don't want is to create too many extremes an example is that it's it, for a lot of companies they're looking for what they call rockstar programmers now a rockstar programmer is usually in my experience at the very least a very very extroverted or at the very least opinionated person who has a lot of thoughts and ideas on their craft. That's a good thing, um, unless you have too many of them in the same team and they create conflict between, between each other, or like they get to be friends and they never produce anything, or they create a lot of legacy. But on the other hand, if you have code monkeys, and as I've described before, a code monkey is just a person who is very strictly focused usually on the coding and they say yes to everything, they don't really reflect on the bigger picture and uh, they kind of just want to do their coding and not be involved in anything else. Uh, if you have only people like that, 
you're going to produce a lot, uh, of course, but at the same time, you're not necessarily going to produce the right thing. And it's very, it's unfortunately likely that you are going to have a lot of legacy and a lot, a lot of other problems. But that's, again, it's the same thing that can happen with the philosophers or the rock star programmers. So it's all about that balance, trying to find people who complement each other. My personal preference, if I'm going to put together a team, is to have at least one or two people who, as I like to call, are drivers. They are people who have, they add energy to the group. They have thoughts, ideas, initiatives. They really want to do a lot of stuff. And they should be together with one or two social code monkeys or people who have a different way of approaching things. Just slightly, like I'm not trying to create polarizations between the people who are working in the group. I'm just trying to find counterbalances because that is the thing. Counterbalances are very important. That's also a challenge because if you create people who are very opposite to each other, then the problem becomes tension, and that's a big uh, that's a big issue. But that, I hope that that makes sense to you. Trying to if you it's like it's putting together a sports team. If you just if you just get people who are really good at I don't know working uh, uh, <laughs> playing as the forward or something like that, and you have nobody on defense well then your team is in balance that's not a good thing you need to find people who complement each other from the perspective uh, of the uh, professionals like the professional perspective you have a I think that you should have a similar sort sort of thought uh, usually in the professional perspective you have you you have innovators and philosophers and you have code monkeys that are these are usually the, the two types of people that you can hire and I would say that it is ext extremely important that you can usually add as many, that's the nice thing about code monkeys, where you can in many cases add as many code monkeys as you want. If, you, if they have the social skills to fit in and kind of adapt, you can add them just as many as you want. Uh, the one thing I will say is that it's very important that you don't only have code monkeys. And I at this at the same time I say that adding a few rock star programmers or philosophers or uh, drivers uh, that's a very good thing. But you you can't have it, it's extor This is why you need to know the group because if you have two people who are very good at uh, pushing ideas and they are very opposing ideas, that can cause a lot of tension. It can be a good thing, but it can also cause tension. So what I like to say is that you should have. A balance here as well. You should try to have at least one or two people who are the driving force, who come up with ideas and thoughts and like really share those ideas and learnings with the others in the group. Because what's nice about that is that the code monkeys are the people who are less inclined to be very innovative and big picture type of people. If if you do it correctly, they actually get inspired. Like that's the compounding effect. Uh, and if you can get these two pe these types of people to see the value in each other, it's the best thing ever. My personal favorite experience was uh, has been working with people who are who have that balance because the people who have uh, who are more focused on just doing the coding, they're extremely good at producing and very often good at details and technical aspects of the software development process, and they appreciate having someone around who includes them and makes them feel like yeah something is moving things are happening etc etc that the drivers are helping them feel more engaged and motivated and inspire them many in many cases to have their own ideas and the drivers i mean they want an audience they want people to hear them out that's a lot of the that's something that they they need but they also in many cases need someone to rubber duck with both group both of these types of people they need a, a counterpart to shoot ideas off of and all of this is possible if you get the social aspect right and that's why i think it's extraordinarily important that if you're build, putting together a team that you know the people who are in the team and that you have the social skills to understand what types of people are you looking to compose your team uh, from like wh what are you going to who are you going to put in the group so what i want you to take away from this <laughs> is that in my experience the best types of programmers to have in a company it's really hard to say this or that about it because it very much depends on who are you like who are the first like what are your values in the company and what people do you already have in the company 
I will say that usually uh, you have two aspects to, to consider. You have the professional angle and you have the social angle. The social angle is usually one of the most important things and you will notice this if you try to get into IT. Uh, focus on social graces and so forth is actually kind of high uh, for this exact reason. And usually what you want is to have a healthy mix of personalities where you have people who have the social graces to get along, but at the same time uh, you have some people who are high energy and some people who are a little bit mellow or things like that to balance things out because you don't want people who are just high energy. Uh, they tend to waste a lot of time if they get too much free, uh, free will. And the low energy people are usually not, uh, they're not a good driver of innovation and ideas and thoughts and so forth. But if they work together, uh, they usually balance each other out. And that is a very good thing to create this, as I like to say, uh, it's a tug of war. The idea is not to pull one side too much to the other, uh, differ, uh, too, too much. It's about having a perfect balance so that the mark of the rope stays uh, in the correct position. And from the professional angle, it's a similar sort of thing. You ideally want at least one or two um, innovators, philosophers, uh, rock star developers who have a lot of ideas and like really are passionate about what they do, together with people who are more about business, getting things done, they, they, they want to do the coding. If you only have people who just want to do the coding, that's you, it's usually easiest to find people like that and it's usually easiest to just add more of those people. The problem is that uh, the, uh, the project will suffer long term if you have too many of those people without any type of counterbalance. And the same thing with the philosophers. The philosophers might come up with a lot of good ideas and if you have the right people and they're responsible, they can create amazing, amazing things. But you also run the danger uh, of them creating a lot of legacy or very clever solutions that later turn out to not be so clever. So the key word here is a balanced set of personalities that complement each other. Have a great day.